Hey guys, welcome back to the Turbo V6 YouTube channel. In this episode, we're gonna be going over my custom crank and cam trigger that I made for the Firebird so that I can run individual coils on an LS1 computer with my custom operating system. So here's a quick sneak peek of all the parts that go into making this custom crank and cam trigger for the 3800 Series 2 in my soon-to-be fired-up Turbo V6 3800 Firebird. Obviously, it doesn't look like it's turbocharged right now. I pulled the whole turbo kit off of it. I'm going to start trying to clean up uh, all the oil leaks that basically covered the front of the engine. I bought some Totally Awesome from... Dollar Tree. We're going to see how that works out. This oil leak is much worse than I expected. I just wound up pulling the rack. So now I can actually access it. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna look way better and hopefully be nicer to work on. Just keep scrubbing away. Okay, well, this is turning out to be quite the mess. Uh, I'm scrubbing everything, but I think I'm actually going to go get steam cleaner. Uh, I attempted to use that before using the totally awesome degreaser, but it didn't do anything, but now that hopefully maybe most most of it's like uh, diluted and knocked loose, the steam cleaner might actually do something now. All right, I got my little Wagner steam cleaner, and uh, yeah, we're going to give it a go. Okay, well I got the damper off. That was a little bit of a pain. Had to just uh, throw a wrench in the uh, flex plate so that it wouldn't spin and use a cheater pipe on a breaker bar and it eventually came loose. And I also got the lower intake manifold off. Uh, looks really clean in there, surprisingly. So somebody took care of this motor and car pretty well. And then once I run a bunch of E85 through it, it'll clean up those carboned up ports and whatnot but yeah now we just have to uh pop this timing cover off which is relatively easy throw my new crank trigger and cam trigger on um this pulley's a little bit crank damper whatever you want to call it is different than the other one that i pulled off it looks like this uh it'll still bolt to it it's it's the same but um the bolts you use to pull the damper off are actually bigger these have uh, 5 16 bolts to pull meanwhile and the other damper only had quarter inch which uh, you know is notorious i guess for like breaking the bolts or stripping the bolts or whatnot but this thing came off no problem hardly any pressure whatsoever and uh yeah i think it'll clean up this rust and hit it with a coat of black spray paint and it'll look brand new so a while ago, I picked up this Junkyard 3800 Series 2 from a 2004 Monte Carlo. I needed a mock-up motor to be able to design the cam and crank trigger off of. And basically use this motor for measurements. And like most things I do, I uh, started out with a prototype that I 3D printed. Fit up to the engine, made sure everything looked like it was going to fit. You know, obviously did all that in Fusion 360. And then uh, made sure, you know, everything lined up. Uh, dimensions were good. 
and then started to get into uh, the CNC programming. Uh, I did all that again on Fusion 360. So this I actually cut out on the CNC before I made this throttle body adapter. If you didn't see that video, I just posted that up a few weeks ago. So check that out. Uh, but uh, this I made a handful of months ago, probably over a year ago now. Um, my first time cutting steel um, went pretty decent. Uh, not too bad, turned out all right. And then I had this piece laser cut, just like I did for the truck. And then I did a, a quick uh, electroplate uh, zinc plating on it so it didn't rust because this will be exposed to the elements. Uh, but this will not be. This will be uh, in the engine. And then I don't think I actually have any video of making this little bracket. But this is the cam and crank uh, bracket that bolts in place of the factory cam sensor. And then I have two Hall Effect sensors that I'm going to be running in that. And yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> pretty much it. Uh, gets you caught up to today. I have not run this yet, um, but I have run a similar setup as long as this cam trigger winds up working out. Uh, I know I've had uh, this crank trigger working on the truck in a, you know basically the same same size, but just um, uh, you know mounted differently, and I use the same sensor. Uh, but hopefully this cam sensor works out. And uh, we should be good to go to be able to run my uh, updated custom operating system. So if you aren't familiar with my custom operating system, I had a video about it before, but I've since actually released uh, version 3 on my Patreon. So if you guys are interested, I'll put the link in the description and you can check that out. Uh, I've released, um, like I said, version 3.0 on there with tons of new features compared to my version 2. And I'm already starting to think about version 4. Uh, what I want to add or, or features that I potentially might want to have for the Firebird. So yeah, uh, check it out and uh, let me know what you think. Okay, quick update. I have pretty much everything torn off the motor. I think I need to take off other than the oil pan. I need to put a drain uh, return for the uh, scavenge pump. Got intake manifold, valve covers, all that taken off and cleaned up. Uh, just has used my little... Uh, five gallon parts washer, five gallon bucket parts washer. I uh, got pretty much everything cleaned up. I'm really debating on whether I want to do some sort of glass bead to these parts because they still have some, you know, corrosion and, and whatnot on them. Uh, and I was really hoping to paint them. So I don't know how confident I am that it will actually stick. Okay, well, I decided to jump on to adding some bungs uh, to a bunch of things that I know I need to. Um, hoping this is a weldable uh, cast aluminum piece and I'm uh, gonna add some 10 AN bungs onto the valve covers for a catch can. And then I'm also going to be uh, cutting off this water uh, inlet uh, for the, you know, the timing cover and then the water pump. I'm gonna, I need to buy a new water pump and then uh, I'm going to be putting AN16 uh, lines for all the coolant lines. And then I'm going to be blocking off um, this port for the heater hose because I'm not going to be running a heater. Eventually, I'm going to have to take the, uh, the heater AC, you know, HVAC box out of the, the firewall so I can gain that extra room over there. That's probably where I'm going to wind up putting the catch can. And yeah, I'm going to just uh, start getting to fabbing. And uh, I'll jump back once it's, uh, it's complete. Well, that seems to be working. Uh, definitely um, some junk floating to the surface, but cleaning action, I have it turned up a little bit. Um, like This one looks a little bit worse, but uh, they generally look all right. So yeah, just going for a, you know, airtight seal. And uh, if it looks okay, it looks okay. If it looks like junk, it looks like junk. It's uh, basically... Super cheap way of adding, uh, uh, you know, breather fittings to the valve covers. It's just use the stock valve covers, especially when the only aftermarket ones are like hundreds of dollars. I don't really remember how much they are, but too much for me. So uh, we'll actually probably just go around and do some cleaning action on it, a couple passes, and then we'll go ahead and uh, do the, you know, the weld. Okay, got it fully welded. 
they are not the prettiest welds because uh, oil kept popping up from the cast aluminum, which I kind of expected, but uh, I was able to push through. I did mess up a couple of the bottom of the threads because I sunk the fitting so deep in the valve cover. Probably shouldn't have done that. But um, they don't leak. I quickly had a line and um, fit it on there and then just uh, threw some water in it upside down, made sure it didn't leak. They're watertight, I guess. You know, only like a you know inch of water or something, but it's better than nothing. Uh, I'm sure these will see a handful of pounds of uh, kit crankcase pressure, but I have some uh, one and a half inch tight radius aluminum bend. I'm gonna chop this uh, water neck off that goes to the radiator. Originally, I'm gonna put that tight 90 on there and then I'm gonna weld a dash 16 bung into the end of this. I'm gonna have to just basically cut this tight 90 out and then I'll have some leftover one and a half inch straight. All right, well, I'm almost finished welding this up. I actually <clears throat> got this part, which was the more difficult part, fully welded up. Now I just have to uh, go around and weld this fitting on. And then on this side, um, you can see what I, I pretty much did on both sides was I just went and did, did the cleaning action around there a few times, brushed it in between, and then now I just laid you know, some filler down. And then now I'm going to take my little block off plate, weld that guy on, and then uh, finish welding that guy. This guy all welded up, tested for water leaks. It seems good. Um, and these are already done. Um, still not sure what color I want to paint these. Part of me really wanted to do a wrinkle black, but I think I might just do a satin black or flat black. Not sure. I think the next thing is I'm going to actually take this damper and pull this factory trigger wheel off and test fit um, my new one. I obviously built it to fit on the front wheel drive uh, harmonic balancer, but I'm pretty sure that these are the same. The trigger wheel is definitely identical. So as long as the clearance is the same, these should, uh, this should work out just as well. And then I also might uh, just wire wheel all this stuff and get it ready for paint. If you guys don't have one of these, definitely pick one up. Uh, I've taken out so many rusted bolts and rounded off bolts with this kit. Uh, I haven't used it in a while because uh, really the Firebird doesn't have any rust at all, so I haven't had to resort to do, using any of these. So I use this kit actually to remove these funny looking little fasteners. Uh, this one I already took off, uh, but it's really simple. I don't know if you can see that it just grabs the outside of it because the head of this is like, I don't know, it, it's funky. They really don't want you to remove these. So I wind up just replacing them with normal bolts. Just take a little sledgehammer, give it a couple nice little whacks and then take the impact. And that guy didn't work. All right, so yeah, I'm resorting to welding it, so. messing around so I welded it fully on the inside and I packed it on the outside so if that doesn't come off we're gonna wind up drilling this sucker out Looks like it's gonna work. Now I just have to go ahead and clean it up. 
Well, it was quite the struggle getting the other trigger wheel off of this damper, but once I got it off, it was um, no problem at all putting this one on. Gave this thing a quick coat of flat black, you know, satin black paint, and then bolted the trigger wheel on. I still need to Loctite those bolts, even though um, they seem fairly tight whenever they go on. I just wanna throw some blue Loctite on there and uh, make sure that thing doesn't come loose. But pretty much that is done for that. And then whenever we get to installing uh, the timing set back on, we'll need to put the cam trigger back on, or the, the new cam trigger, put the new cam trigger on. And then uh, we'll probably test this thing out once um, all that is on there. I'll just rotate the motor over um, by hand and make sure that the sensors are working correctly. But for now, I actually pulled the oil pan off of the underneath which was a pain had to take that motor mount out and jack the motor up but i got it off and scuffed up where i'm going to put the oil return i'm going to try and put it nice and high well that turned out all right i kind of cheated uh it started actually bubbling up um i did not notice that there's actually two layers here i don't know how well you can see that but once i drilled through it I noticed that, yeah, there's a, there's a gap and there's two layers uh, making this oil pan, which I was really hoping that it was going to weld okay. Some junk started to bubble out and burn from in between the two layers, but um, I don't know. It turned out pretty good. I just went over it real quick at the very end. Got some nice dimes. Looks like it's liquid tight. Uh, almost got, you know, full penetration all the way around, but... It's kind of dirty, so I'm not going to be able to get up onto the top, I don't believe. Maybe I can, but I'm not really sure it's worth it. I might just do a quick quick pass on the outside and then call it done. So that's the return bung added. Got a lot done. I'm probably going to end the video there. I have a lot of work still left to do. Um, this project, every time I get something done, just seems to open up can of worms so it's like oh i gotta do this then do that before i can do that it's like crazy but yeah um if you've done a project like this before you know what i'm talking about um but yeah trying to do everything myself and you know get it done as quickly as i can so thanks for watching thanks for sticking around be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you see and uh yeah we'll see you guys later